Hello, today I would like to show you something very interesting. As you know, we are in the tough times and that is a good topic for uh, all sort of prepping community and for the emergency preparedness. And the best is to have a knowledge that is not part of amateur radio and let's to be clear the best way if you would like to try stuff like this is to work in a company that have a license frequency that is paid for for the the government you've got a frequency that you can use and you can transmit whatever you want and you do not have to use the etiquette from the amateur radio you do not need to id yourself you do not have to use the only plain not only text but plain word you cannot use any kind of encryption or the on the image radio despite if this is a voice or data you cannot use anything that will make your communication secure but if you are using the commercial frequencies then you can do everything you want of course maybe the that there might be a difference in the different different nation and the law law but in general that's the that's the rule so what we've got here we've got something really nice i've got one digital radio connected via usb to my tablet computer here is the motorola SL4000, you can see a video about this radio on my channel, connected via the micro USB to another Tavbook computers. I very enjoy these computers for all my field operation and that will give you a very nice set. Hmm, how to start? There is a lot of things to cover. I'm not sure if that should be only a video of showing or a more rambling. Definitely, I'm not going to show you how to configure stuff because that 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 it's too many too many things to cover. So first of all, what this is for a lot of person, this is going to be a two-way radio, and it's used for talking for having a conversation maybe a sending like a short text messages and this is what most people are going to think that this device is capable but i'm going to tell you that there is a one big disappointment but for a, a very good actually outcome this is a digital router and this radio have a uh, two network interfaces the uhf wireless and the ethernet of course that's looking like a usb cable but actually this is yeah, just a usb to the ethernet and inside there is a second network card with own tcp ip address so yeah same thing on this radio but here we've got not only two interfaces but also a third with the bluetooth so we can have this radio on our rooftop connected via bluetooth to our tablet computer and we can do everything that i'm going to show you just without using any cable so very complicated thing this is why this is expensive this is why if you go and just buy like a baofeng that have the digital mode you are not going to get this you are going just to get the serial interface but this is just a ethernet interface so yes 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 what we can do interesting so the radio id is part of the IP address of the interface and it's in the in the area let me open the terminal so uh, here we can send the 
normal standard digital data. We do not need to use anything like the image radio did with using, for example, the signaling and connecting to the radio when you have to adjust the volume levels, make sure that everything is fine. Here you just connect and it's working perfect. Everything is being done inside of the radio. You do not have to touch anything. One of this computer, I believe that one, I booted it up from the, from the USB stick because I've got a Windows there for programming and you do not have to do anything. It's just straight working on one of the two. I just have to assign the uh, IP address and that's all. You can do anything that is using the TCP IP. You can use the TCP and UDP packet. What is the most basic thing? The most basic thing that to prove that these two devices are working. I'm not sure if you can see, but we do not have a we do not have a wireless. We do not have Wi-Fi. We are only connected by by the Ethernet, as you can see, Ethernet, Ethernet, and that's because this is just a visible from the computer side as a standard Ethernet card, like a USB to, to Ethernet dongle. The most common thing to prove that everything is working fine is sending just a ping. We are going to send a, a ping. This is the free, this is the radio ID of this. If I would set a radio ID of 1.5, then here we are going to use 1.5 at the end. I'm going to hit enter. And as you can see, we've got activity. We've got the link here. Here. They are talking to each other. They're asking, hello, I've got a ping for you. Would you kindly respond? This radio is so nice that it's going to say that, yes, I am here. And this is the response. As you can see, one packet transmitted, one received. Here we've got the we've got the the time. The time is terrible. Looks like we've got uh, six seconds, but I believe that's because the radio goes into a uh, sleep mode, and that's why it takes so so much time, so many time. Let's try that again. One for the another. Okay, that one. Okay, let me try. Will it be faster? And as you can see, we down much closer to the to the good time. Of course, it's going to be terrible slow for uh, for anything. Just forget about like watching YouTube, even loading a, a website over this because you can do that. You can, from the technical standpoint of view, you can SSH from one computer to another. You can create a tunnel. You can use any application. You can open the Firefox and try to load website. It will work, but it's too slow. But that's not the case. We are interested in, for example, writing our own application, own chat application, own logging application with a simple database that we can give to our prepping team, like here in the, the disaster that's going on. For example, for counting people, and you can just on the on your phone because you can pair via Bluetooth with your smartphone. There is no problem. You can just check how many people require something. You hit send, and it will send this data back. So there is absolutely you are limited only by your programming skills of what to do. So I'm going to show you only the bare bones. Okay, so we are pinging out. We know that ping is working okay, but yeah, that's not a very impressive. More impressive will be a simple chat. And we can you can use the netcat for that. And this is going to be our server. This is the command. I'm recording in the 4K. I disabled the light. I hope you can see the screen. And I'm just open the netcat session. 
this is a server and I'm going to connect from that computer. And this is the command. I hope you can, you can see this. I'm going to hit enter. As you can see, they are negotiating. There will be information that we've got a new connection from that computer. And we can chat. We can go and chat. I can go here. I would like to see you this. I would like to see you that radio that how it's blinking, but I can go and I'm connected. Oh, I don't want to send it. I can type like, hello. I'm in location. I'm in location. What to do next? I'm going to hit enter, blinking, we've got our message. And on the other side, someone can respond. Perfect. Give a, a report. Okay. And as you can see, you cannot see that, but it will. We've got they are going into a sleep mode and it's going to be slower here i'm just showing you how how faster it's going over over time as you can see everything was working fine the tcp ip and the built-in radio stack make sure they're are arriving in a in the right order. You 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 were thinking that that will be lost, but no no no, it was just not not sent. So as you can see, that was very nice. But of course, we are going to tell that netcat that is not impressive, that is not secure. We are talking about having a, a secure communication. So why why using that? And you are. 100% sure. So let's try SSH from one computer to another. And I'm not proving you that this is good for using as a SSH for remote controlling, but for uh, creating, for example, a tunnel. So I have to take a look which computer was, I believe that was my, so I'm going to SSH to that computer and here, you're going to see a lot of blinking and that's because there is terrible amount of things going on. They are fingerprinting themselves. They are creating the encryption key, the, this challenge. There is a lot of stuff going on. So that is slow and I'm 100% and argue, agree with you that this is slow oh we don't want that but after a while i should got a question for for the password and that will be the moment when we are going to stop because that is my real password and one of this computer is going out with me for all the tactical stuff Let's stay with me. I know this is slow, but this is a huge amount of data, of course, for a modern world that is like funny. And we've got a question for password. Let me let me put it. Okay, I entered password, hit enter. They are still communicating with each other. And once again, if you create a tunnel, a forwarding, you can use this for out to the internet. You can go far away, 10 kilometers apart with a good antenna. You can chat on the internet with someone. And we are fully connected to, to this machine. What we can do, we can check how much of free space do we got, or we can check the uptime. And as you can see, this is not the best way because each key press I'm, I'm placing here is going to be sent to that server 
SSH and then the response is going to be transmitted. So it's not being typed locally and that's why it's uh, terrible slow. So you can see the, the lag, but because we are using the TCP IP and we course we because we've got also a parity on on the radio, so it's controlling the flow. Everything will will must arrive in the right order. So if there will be a packet lost, then it will try to 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 resend it. And I'm going to hit enter, and we are going to see our uptime of on that computer. Slow, yes, but it gives you a uh, much options. And I'm not saying to to use this. I'm saying that you should write your own chat. You can write your own application with own encryption. There is a lot of option you can. DFTH. Let me try this and we are going to see how much free space do we've got. Just to prove the point and take a look how nicely that LEDs are blinking. There is so many, so many things going on. Absolutely, this is something that is killing and crushing the PRS. Of course, this, there are for different purposes. But for emergency, when you need to send something, some sensitive data, here it's going to be encrypted. Everything you are see here is strongly encrypted, and there is no way that anyone is going to to receive the content of the of the standard of the of the data. So as you can see, it's working perfect. I'm running out of free space, but yeah. That's very, very sad. But yes, so this is what I would like to show you. As you can see, absolutely amazing. You can create your own tactical terminal for any, any operations. You can go like this in field and be in touch. You can use a smartphone. You can write application on your smartphone. And you can connect via the you can connect via the Bluetooth and have like completely wireless setup. So I hope you find it interesting. Maybe in future I will show you how to config that from the radio side or how to config that on the Windows because on Windows there is no problem, but you have to add a routing and if you add a route to your config then you can use this alongside with your internet connection so only the packets that they are not going to go to the defla default gateway but if you go to that that ip of the radio the data will be going to to your your radio so yes yes this is what i would like to show you as you can see it's working perfect be happy stay safe and have a nice day see you soon